you've decided you're going to get into property investment, you're going to start end up buying a couple of buy to lets. Um, should you opt to go for an interest only mortgage or a repayment mortgage? Let's talk about that because I'm getting quite a lot of questions out of this. You know, it's one of the first questions that we get from clients, and I've seen quite a lot of the, the same questions around my comment section in the videos. Um, so let's talk about the different strategies of why somebody would take an interest only mortgage and some why some, some others will take a repayment mortgage. Um, and we'll take a look at it. We'll also talk about what my own strategy is. What am I currently doing myself uh, with my own repayment strategy? So hopefully you find this useful. Like and subscribe always on YouTube guys. Thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next one. Okay, so you've done all your research, you've got on Zoopla, you've done right move, you've spoken to some people, estate agents, you've watched some YouTube videos uh, and now you're ready to invest into a property. But do you go for a um, interest only mortgage or do you go opt to go for a repayment mortgage um, so let's talk about that a little bit more traditionally when you're looking at um, residential mortgages I would say in 95% of the cases you should opt to go for repayment there are some strategies out there whereby if you are um, for example a high net worth individual uh, and you think you've got big bonuses coming in you may not want to uh, be committed to a higher um, repayment and you may be able to do more with your money in terms of keeping that money so um, you know generally interest only mortgages for residential purposes are for high net worth individuals people that are earning good salaries and have got relatively quite a lot of equity in their properties when you're looking at buy to let it's a totally different story because um, and i've seen this um with various videos out there now, various blogs out there, um, where people are trying to sort of uh, give out more information about what what people should consider. What I would say is it's really dependent on individual uh, individual case because there are some people that are starting out in their journey um, uh, and are relatively inexperienced or have only got a few properties. Um, they may opt to go for an interest only mortgage because it will uh, maintain their cash flow and frankly they could do better with that money rather than pay the bank off because historically the interest rates are so low you're better off keeping that money, invest it into property or invest it somewhere else and be able to get the returns. There are other reasons why people are opting for interest only. For example, if you're going to keep the property short term, there's no point paying it off or putting a repayment strategy if you're only going to keep it for a year or under a year. So that makes sense. And um, if you're looking to gift that property else uh, to somebody else going forward, so if you're in a, maybe a little bit older and you're thinking about um, estate planning and maybe passing on assets to children and so forth. So that could be that could be another option uh, you can do. But at the same terms, you could be doing in-state planning and uh, because of your tax advisors, uh, um, your tax advisors advise you to, to have no mortgages uh, by the time you are ready because it's easier to pass uh, mortgages down the family uh, or put it into trust or do whatever you want. And, and for that reason, you don't need a mortgage. So you may want to put an accelerated sort of way of repaying that mortgage so although you've got a mortgage you may want to be paying that on over a shorter period of time because you want to get rid of the mortgage so it really does depend on where you are in life what you're thinking of doing um, is it a short-term property development you're getting into um, are you uh, thinking of converting those buy to lets maybe into a limited company are you buying it in a limited company structure also what i will say is 90 well pretty much at all um, not everybody but a lot of the lenders on the residential front they will allow you that overpayment facility by 10 percent so uh, you know my own mortgage um with santander um and they will allow me 10 percent of the balance every year so um and that's great some of them you've got to look into detail some of them they work off on an annual basis so um you know you can make that one so every january it sort of restarts um so that's great but when it comes to buy to let mortgages a lot of the what i call the vanilla the more high street the more standard buy to let lenders do carry that 10 percent overpayment facility so in theory you can go uh interest only and pay the 10 percent off so you're almost doing a repayment strategy depending on the figures um but without having the, to be committed to that repayment monthly payment okay so that's quite good 
Um, however, um, some of the non-high street lenders, a lot of the limited company products that are out there, a lot of them, the, the specialist lenders out there, they don't actually allow you to make any overpayments over the term. So whether it's two years or five years and um, fixed period. So the devil's in the details with that. So if you are looking for that strategy, make sure you discuss this with your broker uh, and tell us about your plans. Okay. What are you, where are you? Okay. So I'll give you an example. My own plan is um, I've got a couple of buy to lets and what I'm doing is I'm keeping those on interest only mortgage because I'm taking that income, the additional income, and I am putting it into my own residential mortgage because my plan is, look, uh, if something goes wrong to me, you know, you never know what happens with this life, you know, with all the corona and stuff, you don't know what's going to happen. So what I want to do is reduce my residential mortgage as much as possible um, so it's affordable, it's manageable if something goes wrong. And then I've got those properties for cash flow, but short term, um, I'm looking to take that cash flow from the buy to lets and put it into my residential mortgage and overpay that facility, uh, that 10% facility a year. So uh, that's what I'm doing personally, but everybody is different down their plan. Everyone's got different plans. And um, so it's not just a straightforward question of you should, if you're a buy to let, it should be interest only. Okay, it just depends on who you are, where you are. So consider that when next time you ask for a quote, if you did like this, do like and subscribe. We've hit over 100,000 viewers now. So I really, really appreciate everybody tuning in, making comments, hitting the bell. I do, if you look at my past videos out there, I do come back to every comment out there. So I really do appreciate you guys uh, staying tuned, really. Thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.